here's what I want to admit to right up front before I go any further into this discussion. This only applies to me. And because of my use case scenario where I'm in front of these two computers for a, an extended period of time every single day except for Saturdays, um, I, I just think maybe this only applies to me. Okay? I don't even know if it applies to anybody else in the entire freaking universe. I'm so special. But here, because I'm such a special unicorn, here is what I have observed. The stable releases of Linux, their updates break everything just as much as my rolling release. Uh, no, way more. Way more. And you know what? I'm not even going to, like, couch it. The, the rolling release breaks way less than the Ubuntu 14.04. And here's what happens. About once a month, I install updates. Now, I, I cannot recall how long this has been on Ubuntu 14.04, but it's, it's got, we're going on, like, six months probably, a little more. Here's what I have observed. About once a month, I install updates. And if you have watched the jblive.tv stream and we're not live, you may have noticed we no longer have videos playing. We instead are rebroadcasting our audio stream. Why, you might ask? Because an update to Ubuntu 14.04 broke our capability to play video and sane stereo MP3 audio over the HDMI interface, and we can no longer do that because an update on Ubuntu 14.04 broke that. So now our live stream just is a replay of our audio stream. And now t today, I did, I did an update yesterday, I noticed today, all of the audio interface, one of the audio interfaces fails to even show up. I had to completely power cycle the machine, unplug the device, power cycle the machine back up, plug the USB device in, and then, of course, I had to go back in and choose all of my audio inputs, readjust all of their levels, and all I did was install updates. The last time I did this, we lost an audio device. The time before that, our video driver got messed up, and it's an Intel video card! Then, almost on a day-by-day -day basis, maybe about once a week on a, when I'm busy, I update the Archbox running on my System76 Bonobo. One is an Intel NUC, one is a System76 Bonobo. Both make great Linux machines. It's not a hardware thing, okay? You can take hardware out of this because it's about as vanilla as it gets. The Bonobo running Arch, getting updates on a rolling release, never fails. I cannot do a show without this Bonobo. It, 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 it drives all of the visuals. It drives all of the sounds. I can't show a story in a video without this Bonobo. It is literally one of the most, besides the machine that actually records the video, it is the most important machine in the studio. And it runs Arch Linux rolling. And it breaks the least. The Ubuntu machines and the Macs break more than the Archbox does. And I'm not doing anything special. So I don't get why everybody always gets on my case about how awful rolling is when in my experience here, I tell you the systems that are supposed to be long-term support seem to break just as much as or more. And I'm saying just as much because honestly, I think everybody's going to attack me. But I think they break even more. But I'll say they break just as well as the rolling release machines do. So uh, what I do not understand is the constant like dogpiling when I go out there and say, actually, I don't think rolling's all that bad. Or like when I wanted to switch Angela to, to, a, to a machine and it was going to be rolling, the dog pile. oh, don't do rolling, don't do rolling, everything's all right. Well, actually, my rolling machines break less than my stable machines. So how do you guys explain this total dichotomy that I seem to be witnessing? I apparently have like jumped through a, 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 a portal and I am now a slider in an alternative version of Earth where rolling releases are more stable and long-term support are more disastrous and yet nobody else is in the same universe with me. I'm over there all by myself. Uh, it's always like that, Chris. Because, you know, the rolling release distros have more practice in terms of software updates so they can do it a lot more where they found all the problems already the ones that do it every once in a while like ubuntu they tend to just you know run into problems or override config files or corner cases that no one cares about rolling hmm. has a lot more practice with updating packages all the time that seems pretty reasonable that seems like a reasonable explanation as to why and, you know, I always do rolling nowadays. Slack wears, like, where everything should be just, you know. <laughs> okay, well, here was my theory, Heavens, and this is what I wanted to bounce off you. What if software has gotten better? And so it's now not as hazardous to go to the next version as it used to be. Is that possible? Like, like Linux version 2 was a completely different beast than Linux version 4 is now. And, you know, it's a much more mature product now. And so is the NVIDIA driver. And so is GNOME 3, much, much more mature, right? So is Chrome and Firefox and GTK. And all of these things in the stack now are just much more mature products. 
Yeah, but they all, also when you do coding, right? You usually kind of have a a backwards compatibility thing with your previous version. So if a version is only increasing or incrementing by one major version each time as a rolling distro versus Ubuntu's maybe skipping two or three versions at a time, they don't have the backwards compatibility or at least corner like the code in order to say, oh yeah, last release, we done this. We got to change the data structure this way. Okay, so here's the other thing that kind of I don't get about the... Now, I know, I think I eventually did get my kernel updated here, so let me double check real quick. So I'll do a U name here. <clears throat> Oh, I'm not an RPM fan at all. Okay, oh. no, never mind. So even though I've done a dist upgrade, so I'm on Ubuntu 14.04, and it ships with kernel 3.13.0. Now, I think there is a way to update that, but I've, I mean, I'm on Ubuntu Mate. I've done all the, I've done app get update. I've done dist upgrades. I'm on kernel 3.13. Now, this is generally considered not like the best kernel of the three series, right? This is considered one of the work, worser kernels in terms of performance and other things like that. So it's interesting that they chose this dish. Now, maybe they've patched it in some way I'm not aware of. But that, I, when they did that choice, I was like, huh, it seems like yeah, maybe they had an off release and they just happened to land on a bad kernel. And then 1504 comes out and the kernel they ship with it has that ButterFS problem that I ran into. Like they shipped it with a version that still has the ButterFS lockup issue. And, I, 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 and again, I'm like, what, what are they doing? Like, aren't they supposed to be curating the best kernel? Like, they, they picked a bad kernel. Like, if I, if I was rolling my own distro, I never would have shipped that kernel. And maybe, again, maybe they fixed it, maybe they patched it, I don't know. But every time I see it, I go, oh, this seems like, seems like they're supposed to be doing a really good choice here. And it seems like they've almost just thrown the dart on the board on the current kernel. Like, well, we're going to release around this time, so do, 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 boom, we'll go with that kernel. And they just, that's all, they, that's all the thought that goes into it. Not like, well, this kernel's known to have issues with lots of ButterFS instances where you can't mount the root file system. Like, you know, like that, didn't, that didn't seem to be like maybe a major issue. And, oh, yeah, by the way, it only seems to hit like after three to five weeks of being used. So uh, <laughs> we'll have a whole bunch of people at 1504 that all of a sudden hit this. Like that was not part of the discussion, apparently. Or maybe it was and they fixed it, but it was never noted. I, I don't know. So, uh, again, with rolling... This is an issue I don't run into. It just, if it, it like, I had that kernel and then it pretty quickly gets replaced with the next kernel. Um, but now here on this, uh, on this Mate box, I'm on kernel 3.13 still, which is I've a clunker. I've got a Mate install, I mean, a Linux Mint install for a friend of mine, and their little ker Linux kernel version manager is, a, I guess, the best thing you can get close to that. But if I ever, ever run Ubuntu, I always use the daily builds of the kernels from their like FTP server. Just the actual daily current builds of current kernels. I never use what's in Ubuntu's repositories. <laughs> ever. <laughs> really? I don't know. That seems like you're really? asking for it, but I don't know. Well, I run completely their daily dot dev files. Screw running the kernels that they put on the repos. You do daily? You do a daily kernel? Yeah, they build kernels daily on their site i can find the link for you i just why do you want a daily kernel though oh it's always the best of the best all right bugs okay. that yeah. were yesterday Might aren't well. a bug now uh no i'm not in a bad mood i just uh i what i what i'm trying to um put together in my head is what what, what appears to be my practical experience um and you know it's not just like these two machines either i've got uh here in the studio we have um one two three, four computers that are running Arch. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, I'm counting. Uh, you, I guess let's just count one of the VMs right now because we're just really using one of them heavily. Uh, and that's, you know, and then I have at my house two machines running Arch, and then I have a DigitalOcean droplet running Arch, and I have another DigitalOcean droplet running Arch that just runs Minecraft, doesn't really do anything. Uh, and all of these, I sort of, all, none of them are updated at any of the same intervals. Some of them are updated very frequently. Some of them are updated like once every three months, maybe, um, like the VMs, and none of them exhibit issues like this. And I'm not like doing anything all that savvy, really. I'm just doing the updates and I'm watching if there's an error, which in fact, there's so infrequently errors that I have to be mindful about watching for it because you know it is that one time you relax that it will make a mistake and you can check the news, you can check the forms. I, I just... <clears throat> So here is what here's my point because I'm rambling. My point is, in my experience, it really does not seem to be one is more dangerous than the other. It, they both seem to need equal amounts of lots of love and attention when you're doing updates. And 
I feel like there is um, a little bit of techno fear in the community about rolling. I think people are inherently a little scared of software. And I think also those are, these are the same people who also sort of revere software developers as sort of unique creators that are sort of a step above everybody else and not just people who have a talent in a specific area. I think it kind of plays into that same kind of culture and that culture also bothers me because I think it sort of creates like these egos that don't need to exist. Anyways, I'm again rambling. I think all of these things come together where it feels like I'm pushing up against something that is a bit of a bias. Uh, and it's not like it's really, it's a first world bias. So it's not like it's that important, but it bothers me. I feel like it's not an injustice, but um, uh, close to it. And so I, I feel like I should be rallied to the cause to defend uh, a truth out there that people are ignoring. I don't know why I feel that way about this particular matter, but uh, I do. And I think part of the reason is is because I was I was 100% on the other end of the spectrum at one point. Uh, I was the Enterprise Linux guy. I was SUSE Enterprise Linux guy and Red Hat Enterprise Linux guy. I tried Gen 2 for a while and I thought it was amazing and I like swung way, way back to Enterprise and I did FreeBSD and I did the Enterprise distros for a little while and then I went to Ubuntu and you guys know the arc of that in the show. I was very much an Ubuntu guy on the show. I, I very, very, hand, very readily handily dismissed Arch and it's been a transition for me. And now I'm at the other end of the transition and I'm looking back and I'm going, okay, I, th I think I made a mistake and I think I'm seeing the same mistake other people are making. And I'm not trying to preach some sort of gospel, but I'm just trying to open up the way people look at software. Because if you're into Linux and you're into this kind of stuff, it's very satisfying and it's very fun to, wa to watch. And I, I don't think it deserves sort of the constant criticism it seems to receive. And I'm a little uh, ashamed that my show has become one of the platforms to perpetuate that criticism. Uh, that I, I think there is a space to criticize. I think it's totally worth criticizing because there are risks because new software inherently can have regressions or flaws. So there's totally a space for debate about it. I'm not trying to say there isn't. But at the same time, I don't think we should shame software just because it's rolling. And I kind of regret that that's the direction the conversation went now that I think about it when it came to regards to Angela's computer. Um, there is a direct analogy to news feeds or news that evolves throughout time. After a news story breaks, it evolves and changes and it gets more clear. That's exactly how a rolling update distro is like. Mm. You sub or what is it? You subscribe to the news feed, but the news feed is just packages. You get the newest news every day. And you're up to date and you're not left behind in the dust. That's very interesting. That is a very interesting analogy. You're right. It's almost like uh, an, a, a newspaper is a capture of the headlines in the state when they're sort of new and fresh. But online news, and especially like what we do here in this show, is RSS really feeds. Yeah, it's like a, we collect and it's an, it's a, like it's a it's a longer analysis after some time has evolved. And it's you're right. It's more uh, the story is more clear. Uh, the, it, that is very interesting. I mean, that's sort of like what it is, right? In in a, in a weird way, in software, it becomes better, and 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 what the what the software developers are going for becomes more refined. Hmm. Yeah, they don't have much time to hide bad problems or, let's say, oopsies that they make. Yeah, yeah. They have to live up and be accountable for what they do. That's what I like, being daily or as up-to-date as I possibly can. 